Welcome to the Golden Hour Brick Podcast. I am your co-host, Liz. I'm your other co-host, Natalie. And tonight we have Georgia on. Um, I feel like we're just kind of like lining these people up down these this family. It's Hannah's sister-in-law's sister. So I'm super happy, happy to have you on tonight. Hi, my name's Georgia. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, so if you want to go ahead and start us off a little about your family and we can go from there. Um, okay, so my husband, BJ, and I met in college, and we met at Southeast Missouri State University. Seems you well. Um, we met in 2014, started dating after graduation, we got engaged right after Alyssa's wedding. So after 2018, yeah, 2018, and then we got married. 2019, right before the world shut down. <laughs> so we got married right at the best time. And we went and we wanted to win. We just didn't know when. We did say we were going to travel for a while after getting married and having all of our fun. But when the world shut down, like, <laughs> I don't know what are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a kid. Um, so I decided to get a birth control in September 2020. Got off birth control and I was like, hey, let's see what happens. I'm going to get my period. Okay, this is weird. <laughs> like, I should be getting this. Yeah. So then I went to the doctor and she was like, oh, well, it could like just take a few months, like just wait it out and see. And she's like, you don't get it by this certain time, then we'll like figure out what to do. Were you on to do have like an IUD or like I something the, that you didn't I was on the pill. Um, oh. But like you skipped. Yeah, I just skipped. Um no, I didn't. So I did have my last period of you know when you take the sugar pills? Mm-hmm. So I had like my last period that was like from the birth control. Yeah. Yeah. And then wasn't getting it. Oh wow. So I went back to the doctor or messaged her in November. I'm like, okay, I'm not getting it. Like, I would like to do something about it. And because I was like, we kind of want to start like starting this process a little sooner. And she put me on progesterone. So I was supposed to take like 10 days of progesterone and then stop it after 10 days. And then apparently you get your period. So I started the progesterone and then I get COVID. Okay. So like, Trying to remember to take the progesterone while I'm having COVID. And we had COVID over our first anniversary, too. And lo and behold, it's when we conceived. <laughs> and I think the progesterone might have had like a play in it. Um, could have helped. But I was also taking mucin, which could for the COVID. Yeah. Cause mucin acts thicken. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So it was. I think. Don't call me. <laughs> it does something with their mucus. Yeah. Because I know sometimes um, when people are trying to, like, that was one of the things Alyssa had on. Well, I've never, she... heard, like, thought about that mucus. <laughs> right. <laughs> it does. It was like, I never put all your mucus. And apparently, I was ovulating without a period. Huh. Which is crazy. Because while I was on this progesterone, I also ordered from Amazon. So I'm like, okay, we're going to process we're gonna track everything we're gonna like try it so i ordered like uh, the ovulate uh ovulation protector kit yeah the uh-huh. opks or whatever they're called ordered those and like the pregnancy test strips from amazon and i get the uh, test strips and stuff from amazon i get it in the mail and i decided to take one of the pregnancy test strips and then it was negative so i threw it away mm-hmm. like, oh, okay so this is how you do it been threw it away because I had never taken a privacy test ever. Yeah. And which is kind of funny, but I go to Alyssa's 
that night to help her set up her first birthday party. Help her set up and everything. And then I come back home to like go to bed, pull it on the trash, but I just want to look at it again. And it's like the faintest line. Like it was a really big squinter. It, I was like trying to tell BJ, I'm like, I think I'm, I might be part of me. Like, I don't know. And then man, you know, he was like, like he thought it was crazy. Yeah. And then the next morning, he we go to the gym, and then he goes into Walgreens and gets the um F R E R one first response early result that one because I was like people in the Facebook group say to get that one, so get it. And I take it, and then the lines come up immediately. I'm like, oh my no, see. Like, and then I Facebook messaged my OB and I'm like, is this real? Like, am I pregnant? And she was like, congrats. And then I was like, but how? When? <laughs> what? Like, and then I all like, the dots together. Oh, okay. So this happened, this happened, this happened. Like, and I ovulated? No. And then we, when we actually got to go to the doctor and figure out our due date, then I realized what our conception date was. <laughs> like, oh, our anniversary. Like, <laughs> oh, that true. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. Gonna you two and two together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> older. yeah we all have. <laughs> all my siblings are nine months from something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me is my parents' anniversary, too. <laughs> That's so <was> cute. <laughs> also, I just want to say you Facebook messaged your OB. Yes. Oh my God. She's amazing. <laughs> we, she is the one who delivered Emmett Reed, yeah. um, Lemon, my niece. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a delivered PM, but I'll get to that story. Um, so then we had Emmett's birthday party to go to with this secret. And I could not keep the secret. Um, so we had, we weren't going to tell anybody, but then I couldn't not with like everybody around and. We had like the picture of the test on my phone and BJ was showing Emmett. It was like, look what we got you for your birthday. And my mom goes, what is that? And then she realizes and she thought we were joking at first. I'm like, no, it's real. Like, why would we joke about that? (laughs) And then, so she, she knew. And then she tells Alyssa and she's all super excited, but we still have like John's whole family coming over in like five minutes (laughs) for the birthday party. So she kind of had to like pipe it down. But then my mom wasn't supposed to tell anybody. Tells John's grandma, Ron, not Ron, but, um, I think it's pretty. Willa. And Willa comes in hugging me, like almost crying. It's like, I am so excited. I thought she was excited for Emma's birthday. Like, <laughs> Emma's birthday. And then by the end of, I think the day, like, Every day, my family knew besides just my immediate family. Yeah. But it was funny because then after everybody left, like then John knew because like Alyssa didn't get to the fuck went like the whole party without like telling him, which was just funny. And John's my brother. Yeah. Um, Didn't Hannah like come to Alyssa's reveal with like the news of Benji or something? I feel like she said that. Did she? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, Hannah, <laughs> Hannah was, took her test and found out she was pregnant the day of Reed, when Reed's gender was being yes, revealed. Yes, that's it. Because <laughs> then I remember her ha- telling me how she, like, fake drinking the beers. Like, she filled them with water or something. Yeah. Which is, like, faking drinking when you're it, You feel like it's difficult in the moment. No, either way. <laughs> at somebody's wedding. Sarah's. One of the cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knew. Nobody <laughs> went right over my head. Yeah. yeah. It was fun being sober if you watching everybody else get drunk. Me. <laughs> and then I remember being like, come on, we have to go out. Come on. And they're like, no. And we're like, absolutely not. That's so weird. They're usually the yes ones. <laughs> and then like nothing going over the next day is like, right. it's glorious. Unless that you're feeling sick. Yeah. I just love that you Facebook messaged your OB. I think that's awesome. She is like my rating gal. She's been through so much with me that like 
she can never quit <laughs> until I'm done. <laughs> yeah, never, never retire. Yeah, seriously. And it was cool being pregnant because Alyssa was pregnant with Reed when I found out. And my sister-in-law was pregnant with Lemon. We were all pregnant at the same time, like having Great. babies all in um, 2021, which was nice. And Lemon came first and then Reed and then here. Yeah. So I kind of got to see, like, what am I getting mid? Yeah. Even though, like, we did win a bit, like, he was the first grandkid or baby or family. So he was spoiled, too. Yeah. But early on, had in my pregnancy, I had, like, nausea and, like, all the normal, like, things. But the nausea got to where, like, I couldn't function with more than 20 in bed. Like, it felt like, uh, Endless hangover that like doesn't go away. So like I did get on Bongesta, which d- definitely helped. But I was able to get off of it after thirteenth, I think, which was nice. And then I, I didn't have to remember to take it, but I didn't have any other complication. And I was able to like so my husband and I were like gym room. And I was able to keep working out up until like three days before I had camp. And oh my God, my husband has videos of me like doing squat. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me to stop? I literally look like a freaking like large like elephant. I'm like <laughs> over in the like corner of the gym, like doing squats. And I'm like, I just, no wonder so many people are like staring at me. <laughs> you go, girl. I have not done anything. <laughs> I my next one, I, I can't even count on two hands in this year. <laughs> but I'm very thankful my body was like let me do that, and because I, I think it helps my energy stay up. But squats are helpful during labor too. I worked out a ton, and I tried to like be in the best shape because I was like, I want. Like a good public for when I'm like wishing all this stuff. Come to find out, this freaking kid is breach. Oh, I yeah. cried. I sobbed. Because oh. Alyssa going through her C section and all of that because of Emmett being breach and other complications kind of terrified me. So I was like, yeah, her seeing her go that, I don't want to do that. And then after talking about Dr. Sloan, she like fucked me off the ledge. She was like, you know, girls in California, like, they opt for this because they want to save their genes. Like, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> I'm just a California girl, right? <laughs> and I did try to like flip it. I did spinning babies. I did acupuncture twice. Um, with the chiropractor, all this stuff. The one thing I didn't want to do was the, um, you know, when they push the knee, like yeah. spin them manually, uh, yeah. you had to like, you actually have to like go to the hospital for the procedure. I forget what it's called. DVC yeah. something, yeah. Yeah, ICV. Mm-hmm. One of those. And I was like terrified to do that because I was like, okay, what if he's in this position for a reason and we spin him in like the core graphs or something yeah. and then it's like, because I was right and because that's what I wanted. So I came to terms with the C section. Like, okay, like I'll get through it. And my doctor really reassured, me, really reassured me. She was like, You're in such great shape. You're taking care of yourself. Like you're going to bounce back quicker than what you think. And then that really helped. But I was still like, She probably just say, like, she probably just tells everybody this. And we scheduled the C-section for, because he was due August, August, August 3rd or 4th, I should be. <laughs> and she scheduled it for 39 weeks. So that would have been, it was, his birthday was supposed to be seven twenty seven, July 27th. Tuesday was great. We're going to have the weekend to clean the house. Everything. Friday morning before 
that Tuesday. We go to the gym like normal. Like every morning we wake up, go to the gym. I get my stupid squat. You know. <laughs> Actually, I think I gave, gave up on squat because I have to do this. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> this was <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and I told VJ, I was like, I'm going to drive separate. Great. Go for it. I get to the gym and I use him and I'm like, nope, I'm going back home. And I was having like Braxton Hicks, but I think it was actually pre term labor because I think I was in labor from early the start of it and laid in bed literally all day. And then BJ's, my husband, um, it was in town from Arizona. So Saturday we went and had dinner with her. And I don't know how I got through that. Because I was like in bed like the whole weekend. And I go to bed every night. Sunday morning, I wake up with like the worst pain. And I'm like, I think this is. And then I go to the bathroom and I like come back. Every day, I can notice that I was up and he's like, You okay? And I'm like, No, I think I'm having stress. <laughs> <laughs> so then he, Sort of timing, and within like a ten minute span, his face phone. He's like, it's, "It's telling me we have to go." To- <laughs> <laughs> My hospital bag wasn't finished. <laughs> so like when you're having a contraction, it like hurts so bad. So that you're like in this pain, so much pain, and then once it's done, you're like, "Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm fine." Like so, in the contraction, I'm happy. And he calls my mom. It's like four thirty in the morning. And so she rushes over to the house while I'm still trying to like finish packing and stuff, <laughs> putting stuff in the bag like I didn't even use. And she's like, You don't need that. You don't need this. All this stuff. And I'm like, Shut up. <laughs> it's on the list. <laughs> like, first time mom problem. problem. Yeah. And I get it packed and everything. We get out the door, our poor house. And I have a friend that coming to watch the dog. So I text her, like, oh, Cam's coming. Like, <laughs> sorry, our house is a disaster. And BJ was like a racing hospital. Literally like a scene out of a movie. Like, I wasn't like, he wasn't about to fall. Out. Like, <laughs> I could have driven like, fine. like my bone falls and it's like slowed down. So finally get to the hospital. And we went to Mercy, and then Mercy, you like, have to go like the triage first. Mm-hmm. And of course, like he was still breached, but they have to like check you to like make sure. So she like wanted to see like how dilated I was because I knew water hadn't broken, but I was still like having really bad contraction. And she, I think I was like three centimeters or something, like it went real far at all, and. She then is like having me fill out paperwork and stuff while they're trying to get things moving. It's like the worst because I gave every paper to VJ to sign. So I'm like, no, I can't do this. And then they moved me from like the triage room to, I was still in triage, but they moved me from different areas. And they were trying to get me up to the OR to get things just like started because I was going to still have the C section because they still do the, um, they give you like a last minute ultrasound whatever their grades to confirm that they don't have a C-section if you don't need one. And throughout all of this, I'm like, I I don't like, usually like I have a pretty high pain tolerance. Labor is no, no. (laughs) It's not like throw your pain tolerance out the window because I was in so much pain. And I remember they were trying to get like my IVs in but they couldn't because I was so ten. And I remember looking at my mom being like, I mean, you tell me I have good pains. Like, why can't they get this in? And she's like, honey, my friend. Like, to focus on the And I'm in, like, the pre-op room somehow. I don't even remember getting from triage to whatnot, but they somehow wheeled me. It's like a blackout mess. Yes. Hallway. And then I remember telling my mom, I had her. And she's like, oh, what was her blood pressure? And they didn't take my my vital when I first came. They like, oh, God. they missed a step. And 
at one point there was like 10 people in the room, like all rushing around, but they weren't like moving fast enough. So my mom like takes, she works at so he takes the blood pressure cuff and like putting it on me. And then they found out that my, I forget what the numbers were, but they were like at a point where I could have had a stroke. Because oh like I had preeclampsia at the like last minute. Like I really had no issues leading up until I went into labor. And they then after getting the readings and realizing like, that 10 people turned into like 20. And then the next moment, I was like getting wheeled to go half camp. And I'm like, look, like I can't take this all in. Like it's all happening too fast. And then they had to get my earrings out. And they're like, I remember they dropped one and that was a mess. And I was like, not understanding why, why they cared so much about my jewelry, just like getting me safe and came out of me. But the moment we wheeled into like, the operating room it was wild because i didn't have like the spinal tap or the epidural yet but like i felt moving it was weird it's like i just felt like at ease and whenever they were giving me the spinal tap i remember they were like okay like hug around your belly and like i was trying but i kept like they weren't they had to do it like a few times because they couldn't get it right and i remember just like it's so weird i'm like contractions right now even though it wasn't fully in yet and then once it was in it was kind of weird because they have to like poke you to make sure that you don't feel anything and then i remember i like felt the first one the current four stories and sometimes it doesn't work for people or it only works on shift your body then you feel stuck and like i was terrified of that happening but luckily it didn't and then it just kind of felt like some tug and then he was out and like and then Happy to yours, and I do regret like not advocating for like, oh, I want to warm my chest, I want all of this. Like now I know going into like if I ever have a C section again, like what I want, and I'm gonna like really advocate for it because I kind of feel like I was robbed of that. Like he was just whipped away. Like I'm literally laying here on a table with my arm like, down. He's over there with my husband, and one like cute memory I do have is right before they like weighed him BJ was like well I want to guess and he was like I think it'll be a six pounds eight ounces and they put him on it with scale thingy and he was six pounds eight ounces and he was like that's <laughs> real cute like you guessed it and and then like holding him for the first time was so cute it was just I was in awe that I was like shit you were just in me like the top of your right here like, is this real and like saying happy birthday to him. Oh, and then we're mom meeting him because he's like you're in the OR, and then like once they like sew you up, you're like on your post op room that you sit in for like an hour before you get to your um mother baby eye. I want to say labor and mother baby. Um, and um. I remember coming off of the spinal tap. You like my oh, belly, not. <laughs> coming off the spinal tap, I was like so she, and I didn't like that feeling because then I was like kind of like afraid to hold him. But after labor, they kind of had to like figure out my blood pressure issues and like what was going yeah. on, what medicine did I, did I need, where did I need to be. And if you've ever had preeclampsia or any issues with your blood pressure, some people have to be on the magnesium drip. Worst 24 hours ever of my life. Like, I felt drunk. I felt dizzy. And when you, whenever you have a C-section, they have to put these, like, um, cuffs on your legs that, like, squeeze it, yeah it's like um it's kind of like a blood pressure cup but like on your legs yeah and they inflate like every so on minutes or something and you have to have them on hours so that was making me hot and very flushed and the medicine made me like feel super hot but then i felt like not the fun type of drug like the drug where i like, can't see like i remember closing one eye like half the time and then, then they're like oh here's this baby hold your baby and i'm like what am i doing oh. it was a mess 
and like looking at the pictures of because my husband took a picture of me on the table um in the middle of a c-section when my arms are like clamped down and i'm like sitting there smiling and then like four hours later on the magnesium drip i look like two different people like on the magnesium drip i literally like was so puffy and which i think is normal after labor anyways but i'm like i literally look so different but i remember my one nurse when i finally was able to get off the magnesium drip she was one of the ones that she added me on facebook like i still like we keep up with each other because she was like my saving grace like we're getting you off this we're gonna like see what the next steps are and I feel like she was one of the nurses that like, advocate for what you want. Except, okay, I don't like being on this. Yeah, I believe you have to be on it for 24 hours, but she really helped get me off because some people do have to stay around longer, which, like, no, I was get me off. And I did have to be on like blood pressure meds for a few weeks after, which because my mom had to teach my husband how to take my blood pressure. I still have the log in my phone. Like you have to, t- I had to take it like three times a day, and then it was like not where we wanted to be with certain medications. So I had to like switch medications, and it was a mess. So I'm hoping you like the next pregnancy that I don't have the blood pressure issues again. But I think that's like. I mean, what's going to scar me? But like, if I can see again, it's just, it was a while. Yeah. Like a, did you ever have a high rating before you delivered, like, at a doctor's appointment? So I think, like, my third appointment, I think I did. And they took it again. And then it wasn't as hot. But I do remember, and I think in, one of my like six week check after delivery that I like asked about. I don't remember it's like a postpartum. Yeah. I don't really remember the answers. Um but the work director just takes it out. Like I remember bringing Cam home from the hospital and the day we came we brought him home. All I said when he came over, everybody came to meet him. And it was great. And then the first night, he almost would sleep like two hours at a time. And obviously that's like normal for a newborn, but my husband and I just like the lack of sleep mixed with like all of your hormones everywhere is not a good mix. And he ended up becoming like a really colicky baby. So I, he would just cry a lot and then I would cry with him. And it was not, not the funnest of time. But I also really struggled with postpartum depression and anxiety. So I kept having to like have check ins with my doctor and Alyssa, my sister, and my mom were like my saving grace because they would check in on me every day my mom did stay with us a few nights or we'll still would come over and stay and like take him for the night and he just feels like a good sleeper and then he did have silent reflux so he would like run but it like wouldn't spit up so he was like burning and I didn't know until Alyssa came over when I was like, oh, I think this is what's happening. What do you know? It's like, I'm like, I'm supposed to know this. Like, <laughs> feeling like a failure. And luckily, she was great because then I was just able to like kind of relay all of that to their pediatrician. And we got him on Pepsid. That really helped. We did have to switch his formula a few times because he ended up having like a milk protein allergy of course he had to be on the most expensive formula <laughs> and i was like god damn it like why if i just want to breast that maybe i could have like saved all of this but looking back i did opt to like not breastfeed because 
maybe it was my sister's journey. I was just going to like, I think I'll sit with one of them. And Cam did have a tongue tie and a lip tie. So I was like, we did end up getting those lasered, but I was like, okay, if I would have, I would have had more issues and I probably would blame myself for all of these issues that he had. Yeah. Otherwise. Blood pressure meds do not help. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I had a, Lauren was like our second guest on and she went through all of that. Like the blood pressure meds. Yep. Yeah, her, her story literally was like, yeah. it was one of the ones I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, they do not help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll blame ourselves either way. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I felt guilty for formula maybe if i were to breastfed but like either way Mm -hmm. it's like we're always like oh i would have done that or whatever but it's everything's hard (laughs) oh my gosh yes and i remember whenever we went to the pediatrician to get his um the consultation for his ties i was like had so much fear of like what if i make the wrong decision and then we did go through with like after weighing like the pros and cons and getting direction from uh say the expert. Afterwards, I was like, oh my god, like I made the wrong decision. Like he's in pain. Like I have to do these stretches with him now. Look, I think didn't like me touching his mouth versus like I don't think the stretches caused him any pain. But this little child got RSC when he was six weeks old. So we were in the thick, I was in the thick of postpartum or in the fourth trimester, having this colicky baby, not sleeping, gets RSV. We he ended up going being in the hospital and he had to be on oxygen for like we're in the hospital in the middle of the night on Friday. We didn't go home till Monday morning. Oh yeah, that's, it, that's it a lot. Was, yeah, and it was also COVID times, so like you couldn't have anybody come up to like relieve you. Like my mom couldn't come up, or Alyssa couldn't come up to like kind of let us sleep or do something. But him being on the oxygen, I didn't do the stretches with him. So, I was, so then he ended up having to actually get it done twice. You know, <laughs> I'm like Jesus Christ. <laughs> But then catch a break. Yes. And any parent that has to be in the hospital with their like six, like any baby, I feel for them. So I'm like, we didn't, like, I didn't leave those four walls of the hospital room, like the whole entire time he was there. The nurses, like, I knew the beat score was like so, like, bombarded and busy that we couldn't, like, we need to go get them from the cafeteria or something together at the same, like, be in at the same time. Because, like, they didn't have, like, the time to, like, sit and watch it or one And, like, wow. leave a baby alone. And then, oh, my God, this the sleep. Like, we didn't get any sleep because we have, like, the nurses and the doctors and stuff in all at different times. And they would, like, pump them if they have to do anything. And, yeah, it's, like, now, I think, like, if we're in the hospital now, I think I would kind of be like, okay, no, not right now. Like, yeah. you kind of have more say when you're like a fresh, six week new mom. You don't, you feel like you don't have, like, I don't feel like you can but like, you don't feel like you have the um, power to say, yeah, like, no, or you work this way. Yep. But yeah, after kind of going through that experience, and yet, like, one time we had to go to, um, there was one time where I heard my husband was like, oh, go ask him if we could feed him. And then I was like, oh, no, he's my kid. I'm going to feed him. <laughs> I'm going mean, to felt like the power there. I'm thinking of it. Yeah. And? <laughs> Bam. Yeah, see, and he got your good, but mm. yeah, that's why he did it. It's so funny. You repeat it, bitch. But how do you know? 
even when the bigger things are like one point it got I like just got I got so, I was so depressed and in the thick of it all that like I was like suicidal and I was having just like suicidal and everything and luckily like my mom and my sister were there and they could tell something was wrong they just like wanted me to express it for a friend who's holding these thoughts I was having and my mom wanted me to go back to the hospital but I was like no I do not want to go back there like luckily I didn't have to but she did like talk to my OB because my mom always so hands her number well um talk to her and like well like kind of give me a like a better plan get my medication right all for yeah like i can't believe like this thought and all of this like now looking back i can think back when i was in the thick of it i thought my life was over and it was it's scary knowing that like it's so easy to get place yeah but like definitely having your village and support is like when do you feel like the the weight like was starting to like lift up? Like how old do you think it was? Or uh-huh. definitely after you know, see it, or see it about six weeks. I think the turning point was like when he turned two months, and then I kind of felt like I had a better feeling of like routine. Definitely by the time I was done with maternity leave, I was done with maternity. Well, me and so he followed. It was like almost, and it definitely was a lot. When I was back to work, I was like, okay, I'm ready. Like I want, and that's of my identity back. I want adult interaction. Because with maternity leave, my husband was working, still working full time from home. So he was working from home while I'm upstairs. Yeah, I'm doing everything. And then it was very easy to feel resentment. Whereas him, like, oh, he can't short leave. Like, he is working. Like, it is his job. And his company didn't have any paternity leave. So he had to use his vacation. But since I was basically in the hospital week, he really only had, like, a week off that year. It was, like, any new parent. Your life just totally changed. You totally but luckily he was able to work from home and yeah. help here and there because if he didn't like I feel like I probably would have been even deeper in the depression and anxiety yeah. and all of that like being completely wrong. yeah I remember one well, Alyssa showed up at my door with a bucket of like sunshine and it was like all these yellow things <laughs> to give me and I'm like I'm gonna cry. She's the cutest, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was oh. like a cord. I remember. And I really don't know what I'm doing without. Got a good sister. <laughs> we all have good sisters. <laughs> but yeah. She's so sweet. She's so thoughtful, and I remember it had like a a smiley face balloon on it. Like it said, like Mama George. Oh. <laughs> and it was just. Really helpful, but I'm glad I was able to get out of, like, switch the dark. It was just like, what the Most of your, like, leave is, like, sitting on your couch, you know? Yeah. Watching Netflix. Yeah. With your baby in your arms. <laughs> and I remember being like, I wish it was freaking rain. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I wish the weather would just match my feelings. And the rain. And I'm like, it kind of felt like the moment when I walked into like the OR and it was like peaceful. It was like, maybe God is real. Like, <laughs> it was like wishing for it to rain. And like, then it did. And it was like such like um, kind of a nice feeling. Yeah. But it's also real. I don't think I've ever told It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
you delivered in July and you're like feeling gloomy, but the sun's out. <laughs> yeah. I will say one thing that helped with delivery in July and having him when the weather was still like, like how it is now, dead yeah. of winter, is when he would get fussy, it's like bringing him outside. That was yeah. like one of the like things that would help him um, calm down. And like anytime we would just go outside and like a, a switch would flip. Mm-hmm. And I remember we took like our first walk after having the C-section. It was like four days after we went from the hospital. And we took our dogs on a, on a walk. He had like in the barrier. And I remember I looked at being like, oh my God, look at you. Like you're going on a walk. I couldn't do this for like weeks. And I'm like, okay, like maybe I do got I, I got this. Like it's hard to like keep telling yourself you're doing a good job. Like when you're in the thick of it, yeah. especially when you're a new mom, because like you've never done this before. You know what you're doing. You're relying on Facebook groups to help you get through being in the trenches. And honestly, without Alyssa, my mom, all my other mom friends that I have, like even Hannah, Alyssa's friend Lindsay, I like wouldn't know or like have direction of like different things. Like even this app called Wonder Week. Like oh, Alyssa no, no. turned me on to. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I know my shit now because I can read this and know what's going through. <laughs> it's funny. Just so, like when he would be going, me and my husband call it going through it. Mm-hmm. And he's having like <laughs> an episode or a tantrum. But I remember when I first learned about that app. And knowing when he was in a league, trying to convince my husband of it. <laughs> and then one night, he had woken up in the middle of the night after he had been sleeping for a while. And then I'm like, oh, it's because of his sleep. Like, he's learning this, this, and this. He's going through this. And my husband thinks I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then I let him read it. And he's like, oh, I think I could do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But... Sorry. I love it. I I think Alyssa turned Hannah on to the Wonder Wakes. And then I was like, Hannah, is this happening for you? Because, you know, yeah. like Ben and Wes are, you know, two weeks apart. I'm like, is this happening for you? And she's like, you need to buy the Wonder Weeks. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep asking you. <laughs> <laughs> it is super helpful. Like, I will say in the beginning, I was super too into the app, I think. Like, oh, this date, this is going to happen. I need to the clown's coming. The storm cloud coming. Like, he's going to be super fussy. And then will they stop, like, looking at it too much and putting so much emphasis on it? Like, it didn't exactly line up. And, like, maybe his storm colleagues weren't, like, super bad. But I think that it would have put emphasis on it and thought that it works. <laughs> but the sun's going to be. You, you have you seen the part of it? No, I never ended up getting it. Oh, I'll show you it. All right, I thought they had a free bird too. I had it for a little bit too. That's a big reason why I didn't do it. So it has it like mapped out in weeks, yeah, in a calendar. Yes, it's yeah. like a yeah. calendar, and like it'll have like a storm cloud over the one that like is probably the hardest, so oh. they could be a little bit more easier to cry, harder to sleep because they're going through so much transition. Yeah. But then they'll have like over the week that'll be like the best. They'll be so happy. They have like a all right, I'm so should I take you over. Right? It's funny because we're always to the end for it. No more week. No, we're not gonna do oh, oh, yeah. every time it'll be his own purse. <laughs> yeah. Wait, <laughs> he is Cameron is a suit. <laughs> Everyone lately has been calling him the happiest kid. And I'm like, I think this comes from my husband, like his part of his DNA, because my husband's mom would always say that he, I mean, VJ was the happiest baby. So I'm like, okay, this is you. Like, yeah. He looked like you. Walked. He, oh my God. He, they have 
his genes run deep. <laughs> Looks like you, is very loud like you. Um, and like, yeah, so, it's just like a long show hair. Like, today when I picked him up from daycare, he was diving onto the floor. But like, like he dives on more dogs, but with like, like you would belly flop into a he was doing that. It's like, where do you learn? Like, <laughs> <laughs> on the stage where I was climbing on everything. Like, I haven't ever had to pick up a child and put them down from surfaces as much. It's all fun. It is fun. It's wild and fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam taught Wes to like run into his mattress today, like a football player. I'm like, this is exactly what he needs to be doing. <laughs> he already like rides our dog and <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, climbs everything. <laughs> There's no fear. We had two golden, like two ninety five pound golden retrievers, and they fight like they play fight, like wrestle. And he will try to get in between them. Like, me, you were going to get hurt. Yeah. Like, there was a few times he'd gotten knocked over. And I'm like, you can't play with him like that. But those two dogs, they take so much from Like, he will try to grab the tongue. He, will, <laughs> he does feed them food. So, it's yeah. A good, a good trade. It's but, a good trade. Like, <laughs> like, he knows he's supposed to beat because they are typing, they are perfect. told us they were worth like no more people food. And every time I catch him, he'll be like, pull it away. Oh, like, like he knows. Yes. Yep. He's sneaky. <laughs> he knows more than we like, have to breathe. Yeah. I agree. Um, I feel like I need to bring up that. Didn't DJ tell you he was a boy in a really cute way or something? Oh, yes. Our gender reveal. Yeah. So, I am not the type of person who I don't like all of the attention on me, especially like a whole reveal with like in front of people. So, I knew, saw that Russell Dickerson did this reveal to his wife this way. So, I let VJ get the result and read them. And then he went to the store to buy, yeah. Uh, like all the boy clothes and the boy yeah. and then decorated the nursery and then revealed it to me. Oh. And we videotaped it all like Russell Dickers. <laughs> like I literally just stole that idea from him. But I love it because we said with um when we go to have our next baby that I will get to do that for him. Cute. But the other day we were talking and I was like how could that heal with me? If he will do this with me, like, that would be so cool. Like, you didn't get that. So, like, I get to do that. I think that's a cute will even be at the age where I get her seen her. Yeah. Maybe here. But it'll be fun. It's so sweet. That is one of my favorite videos that I've seen. Yeah. I think, like, the first time we, like, talked, you showed me that. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so cute. <laughs> I think I cried. <laughs> Can't see this now. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I told BJ to like vlog style it. <laughs> he was like talking to himself in the car, and I'm like, "You talk for so long, I had to like speed that part." So it's kind of like <laughs> he talks kind of fast, anyways. But I had to speed it up for the video, and I was like, "You were supposed to like vlog yourself in the store, like picking it out too, and you didn't." <laughs> but uh, decorating the room was was cute and in the video too so sweet and then like we made cupcakes for and this isn't in the video but we made cupcakes, um with like blue icing in it for my mom and for my sister for them so and then we can just call my brother but they got that that way for the video for the world cute and we really thought we were gonna have a girl like we were calling it our girl's name's room and all this kind of stuff. Even though I had no inkling, no, no, uh, um, signs really pointing to it. I just had this weird intuition there. Oh, yeah. But now I'm like, I love being a boy mom. I'm like, 
give me give me all the boys. <laughs> 2021 was okay. the year of the boys. Yes. Everyone I know had a boy. All of a lot of my college friends just had babies. Like there was like four boys, one girl. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. I know. There were so many boys like you, Alyssa, Hannah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still can't believe that I have a girl and now that you're having a girl. I can't believe it. Makes sense. Yeah. So what, um, we're kind of, if you don't mind talking about like what kind of treatment you had for your, you know, postpartum depression. So I got on, so I used to be on Lexapro and I got on that in 2020 great loved it but then when i was pregnant i got off of it just because i was like don't know don't really want it i mean I just don't like i can exist without it yeah. and manage on my own so i did work in my ob and let her know that like i do want to go back on it after i deliver but she suggested getting back on it at 37 weeks because she was like, I want it to build up in your system. I don't want to hand you a baby and hand you it at the same time. So I got back on it at 37 weeks. But after having care and kind of going through it, I was like, I don't think it's working the same anymore. And my OB was really like my shoulder to lean on, like the amount of times I cried and, um, the doctor's office with her and explaining everything to her like i had more postpartum checkups than you're supposed to just because of me going through it but she put me on christy which um, took a little bit in my system to build up so i think after a few weeks of being on that is kind of when the turning point started going and it started it was kind of like all these different things aligned with kind of came doing better then kept in that as calling me doing better and then the medicine working the way i needed it to um they did want me to go to therapy but being a first time mom i was so in the uh, putting myself laugh okay that will get done it will get done one day well, not right now like when do i find exactly <laughs> I, which, looking back, you're like, is that? Oh, I totally would have. Oh, <laughs> it, it, totally, it totally would have been so doable. Like, I know that, like, I could have probably literally done a video chat therapy with Cave in My Arms or, like, even being on leave. But when you're in the, the thick of it, you don't think that way. Yeah. And I still continue to put myself well. And I think that that's why I don't work out as much as I can or I don't have the motivation anymore which like sucks because I really want to get that far back and being obsessed with the gym again it'll happen <laughs> let me know when you get there <laughs> give it to me <laughs> years I did start therapy but I just like put it on pause and it like the girl yeah I have really I thought you like life right there but I'm like <laughs> And it, I don't okay. really, like break but, up like that. Like, how do you uh, like? Yeah. Like, I was and told her I was like, I want to put some pause. I told her it's because I wanted to find somebody else, and I keep putting myself last. And it's weird. Like, I need to. See. Thank you so much for sharing your story and coming here. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to do it again for a number two. But yeah, <laughs> whenever <laughs> in, uh, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are you public on social media? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if people would like to find you, how can they find you? It's just at Georgia Bomberio. Okay. Cool. We'll link that in the show notes. And then, um, don't forget to follow me and Natalie on Instagram and give us a rating and review. Yeah. And we'll see you next episode. Thank you.